Hi, it's Neil with Western Canadian Rockwell. Today, we're gonna to do a product demonstration on our budget sway bar kit. This kit we put together as a lower cost alternative to our normal sway bar kit. Uh, basically what it does, we've designed it so that you can source a lot of the parts yourself and uh, save you some money in the end. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over what comes in the kit, uh, what you need to source yourself, and then what it looks like installed. Today in the shop we have this mega truck here, it's a customer's, it's named Dirty Intentions. As a you know, mild-mannered young man like myself, I'm not sure what that means. Allie behind the camera probably has some ideas, but I'm not sure. Anyway, what we're going to do is now we're going to get into the kit, what it's all consists of, and then we'll move into the back of the truck to show you it installed. Okay, we're going to go over the kit. We're going to go right to left. You're right, not mine. So we're going to start with is the basic stuff that comes in the kit. Right here we have a one inch piece of pipe. We have four plasma cut arms, four plasma cut tabs, two tabs to hold the two inch tubing, two split collars, and two Durland bushings. This stuff comes in every single kit that we sell. And then these additional parts we leave up to you to source. Uh, the torsion bar is a front suspension torsion bar from basically any half ton GMC with an independent front suspension. So they're easy to find at any scrap yard. A chunk of two inch 120 wall DOM tubing. Your bolt kits, they're just one inch bolts, one inch nuts. And two three point uh, hitch tractor links. And you can find them at just about any hardware store. On our website, we list out exactly what you'll need for these parts. So if you buy the basic kit, you can find all this stuff at your local hardware store. And and or junkyard. So now we'll go into the kit installed. Okay, here's the sway bar installed. Uh, what we're going to start with is the tube that the torsion bar slides through. What is a two inch piece of 120 wall DOM. It has these mounting tabs here that slide over the tube and they have a flat surface you can mount on the bottom of a frame or whatever you want. You don't have to use these if you prefer or if it works better for your application. You can cut a hole in the frame, slide the tube through that. Um, then what we'll do is usually weld the tabs on, cut the bar off or the tube off to whatever length you need, and then weld everything together and you're good to go. One of the benefits to using a tube instead of just like a pillow block bearing or something like that is if this bar ever breaks, which they can, you don't have two loose ends flailing around. It's, you know, fairly important if you have the sway bar mounted underneath a, you know, fuel tank or your oil pan or something like that. You don't want these two pieces, you know, sometimes they'll break off sharp. You don't want them banging into things. If it snaps off, everything stays inside the tube and it can't hurt nothing. Okay, these are the bushings that come in the kit. They're made out of a really hard uh, plastic called Durlin. We machine these to fit the bar and to fit inside the tube. The nice part about these things is that they're very durable. They don't require any sort of lubrication like grease. Um, they don't care if they get full of dirt or mud and water. You can fill these things up and it will still last a really long time with this bar inside. And then here, is the split collar. So the idea here is that you can space the bar far enough out to get a weld on it. And then once it's welded, you can install the split collar to keep the bar from sliding back and forth. The other thing, the one thing to keep in mind is that when we weld these arms out, we'll slide the bar out quite a ways, weld them, let it cool, slide it in to the desired length. And then as we're welding the second bar, it is, it will be close to the bushing. Usually we'll space it out about an inch. It's just to w wrap this or this bushing with a wet rag. It just helps prevent it from getting any heat built up in it. These will take a fair bit of heat, but to a point. So if you get them, if you get the bar smoking red hot or something like that, it will damage these. So just wipe it or just have a wet rag covering that and it'll make sure it doesn't get damaged when you're welding. Okay, the next part is the arms that come in the kit. These are designed so the GM torsion bar slides through them, as you can see here. 
it welds on and then the other part the bolt goes through for your adjustable link the one inch tubing that's supplied in the kit it welds into these holes here just to provide a little bit of strength for the arms uh, it doesn't matter which direction you mount the arms we put a little bend in them just to help make them a little more universal this one it worked best with the arm pointed down but if you need to you can flip it over if you've got a really tall truck or something like that it doesn't really matter the only thing you want to try and do is at ride height make sure this hole and this hole are level so if you drew a line between them they'd be level at ride height and that'll give you the best angle at full compression and at full droop okay and basically the last parts of the kit <clears throat> are this adjustable tractor link the reason we went with these is because they already have a spherical rod end built in on both sides they're adjustable so you can screw them out and lengthen or shorten them if you need to so basically this just fits in between your arm put a bolt through there two tabs weld onto the axle down on the bottom and the other end goes through there and the reason we went with these <clears throat> is because they have a lot of adjustment and the nice part about that is with pretty much any sway bar if you take a hard hit or you stretch it or it even wears over time they will tend to uh, bend so the nice part about these adjustable links is if you hit a big hole and put a little bit of a kink in it meaning one arm's kind of pointed up and one arm's pointed down a little bit you can adjust that out with these adjustable links keeping your truck straight that way you know if uh, you do hit a big hole you don't have to cut the arms off and replace the bar you can you can get quite a bit of life out of these without having to replace components okay. and these bars aren't the most user-friendly to reuse if the torsion bar does get uh, kinked or bent or breaks uh, we do have kits that the arms are removable quite easily they're a little bit more money but if you do need to ever replace the torsion bar here just cut these welds off grind it flat push the arm off the bar and then go and find yourself another torsion bar front suspension torsion bar from any half ton gmc slide your arm back on cut it to length weld it up and you're back on the trail okay just to go over this one more time this is what comes in our basic kit it'll be the four arms the four tabs to mount to your axle the one length of pipe that acts as a gusset for the arms the two Durlin bushings the two split collars that ride up against the Durlin bushings and then the two tabs that mount the two inch 120 wall piece of tubing in your vehicle and then if you want we sell all these additional parts individually so if you want to order just a chunk of two inch 120 wall we can do that as well or if you want to order just the bolt kit we can sell that as well and as mentioned the part numbers and typically where to find all this stuff is all on the website underneath the product for the sway bar so if you need to look up any of that kind of stuff it's all available there so you should be able to find it locally at a hardware store or a junkyard